Hello and welcome back to Tyranny. It's time to finally stand face in face with the Arkham of Secrets at the Cacophony. I think that's it. Oh, fuck, I forgot to do the rest. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really don't like fighting with Chorus. They are so weird. You blow up, then you do good stuff. And I forgot to use another potion. Of course, I'm gonna use all of them on myself. Why would I share? Um, of course, I've used it on her. Did I use at least one? Anything for Alpha to kill and check. No. Oh, I see a lot of enemies. Oh, blood sucked out. No, I don't think it was this one. Um. The voice is over there. I don't want to fight them from up here. I'm not here to make friends. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I will have your head. <laughs> Sarah Sorry. is great at keeping herself alive. I must admit that. that. <laughs> yep, yep. Not so much with keeping others alive, but herself. Frankly. Okay, I think we can get another one. Damn it, heal. Certain unorganized times go on for as far as you can see. So we quite literally raid his camp right now. Ooh, I'm actually amazed. Because this can work. <laughs> Do 
Ah! I have no idea what she's doing. <laughs> she's got, trying to catch her. What? Really? I'm not quite like, done yet. He still has some more people out here. Oh, we can rest just like that? Really? That's just, that is interesting. of food and cloth litter the floor of the tent. Okay, I'm not sure if we are ready, but here it goes. Your campaign ends here, maggot of unreason. We have no intention of joining the uncounted corpses littered in your path. We love to see an agent of the court shatter their bonds and declare their sovereignty. But you would have been better served wearing red. The gangs need more talent like yours. At least we can make an example of you that others will remember. We could have been magnificent together. But instead, we will have your bones fashioned into a scepter, your skin knotted into a belt, and your tongue fed to crows. At least crows know the meaning of respect and gratitude. Fatebinder, wait. The voices has been weaving at my loom for years. What are you saying? I'm saying that he pointed us at Crocus, he led us to Fort Squander, and that he wanted me to learn what I learned there. She counts her points off on her fingers. I'm saying that maybe everything's gone according to his plan, including this. You presume we possess a more than passing interest in this trumped-up barrister? He taps his scepter against his bronze beard. Whatever our dear adjudicator lacks for, his rationality has never been in question. How are we to know that one of Tunon's students would engage in such ridiculous folly? Your paranoia delights us. However, a stint in infiltration has complicated you delectably. You think I didn't work out your little plot? That I didn't fathom why my sisters got all mixed up inside of me? Don't dance around the accusation, girl. Seize it like a lover. I... Go fuck yourself, Archon. Hesitation. This isn't the verse I know. We've both been here before, haven't we? I'm right back to the day when my sisters died in front of me, only this time I'm truly afraid. Maybe my idiot brother has something to do with it. The last time this happened, I froze. Now I'm more afraid of what happens if we attack. Listen to her, Fatebinder. She shows wisdom beyond her years. The Voices of Narat is a terrifying, centuries-old mastermind, and neither of us have been around as long as him. That point seems worth emphasizing. I really, really hope you understand that he's going to hurt us. It's true. We promise. If you're up to it, then I'm with you. 
I've killed my share of gang bosses, and it doesn't take a genius to know when a leader is flagging and needs to be replaced. <laughs> no offense, Archon. She glances at the voices of Nerat and frowns. None taken, wretched girl. We have never been more proud of you than at this moment. You are everything the chorus strives to become. Couched in his wreath of green flames, the Archon of Secrets Bronze head turns to you. Perhaps not all is lost between us, Fatebinder. Perhaps you would be willing to accept a settlement of our grievances in exchange for the return of our fury. You would bow to me in exchange for verse. Oh no, our dear, ridiculous Fatebinder, no. Not at all. But we shall rescind our territorial claims and remove our chorus from the tears, leaving the particulars of this peninsula's governance to those remaining. The tears will be entirely below our notice. What do you intend to do with her? Invite her into our cacophonous hole, of course. Worry not for her, for we shall envelop her in familial understanding. Your sacrifice to our holy cacophony. The Archon's words pile atop one another, teetering on the brink of collapse into meaninglessness. I've never seen the voices get like this. It's like he's fractured around the edges. I know it sounds crazy, but if you gave him what he wanted, I bet he couldn't take it. There is no version of this conversation in which I give you verse. Sorry, voices. Looks like I found a new Archon to follow. Shall we end his miserable existence together? Sounds like a plan to me, boss. I'll sleep a lot better knowing there's one less parasite in the world. Our little spy is right about one thing, you know. You're going to die, screaming. But your awareness will live for eternity. Suffering within our magnificence. Attend to us, darlings. There is more than one way to skin a fate finder, and we will show you as many as possible. The voices of Nerat readies to attack. Come, gather around and watch us destroy the fate finder. I'm not here. To Oh, they are really up there. Make for a ha <laughs> Will do. Why are you not attacking at all? This is me. This is. Such a simple task. Yeah. No! Had enough of us. How about a little more? You can. Had enough of us. But a little more. Captain. Don't you have any healing? Yes, you do.
That's it. Bleed. What could make this better? All right. More of us. That was just luck. Keep running, keep running, keep running. Yes, you insignificant little morsel. We would have a word with you. The Archon clutches at his orbs, the tears of which shine with dim green flame. No! At first you hear nothing but the muffled roar of blood rushing through your head, but another sound rises up over the din. Rokus' laughter. It grows to such volume that your ears prickle in agony. The moment you can take no more, it subsides into an even chuckle. Did you think we could not make ourselves heard if we wished it, you naive and despicable fledgling? I hoped. The Argon shakes his head and chuckles to himself. Whatever the thoughtless rabble may whisper about this moment, don't delude yourself into thinking you are powerful, that you matter, or that someone out there isn't greater still. We came from nothing. Our deeds defined us to the people, and the people knew us as a monster. Did you imagine we were always flames, voices, and secrets? Think on that. You archon of misguided decisions. I could never... I could become like you. I will heed your words. At least you know the value of good advice. That will take you farther than any beaten trail, and it will bite deeper than any cruel weapon of iron. Something about this strikes the voices as funny. He begins to laugh. Short bursts develop into violent, uncontrollable spasm of insane joy. The voices let his hands fall from his robes. The very flames that defined him as a shapeless being whip into a frenzy, consuming him as they burn. You hear a distant, incoherent chorus of screams in the back of your head, but as quickly as it rises, it fades to silence. The Archon of Secrets is, is, is extinguished before your eyes. No! Not like this! We were so close! Is he truly dead? Can I hope that the monster that tormented me will never torment another? <laughs> Good riddance, asshole. Shouldn't have screwed with me and my sisters. She kicks the smoldering pile of ashen rags. M Shadow Hunter and Archon Killer. M Terror. M Death that stalks and swift, swift, silent strikes from darkness. And most feared predator in all of Tears Land. She flexes her black gleaming claws. Please. Final scream and gentle touch. Bodies of disfavored commanders are proudly displayed behind the voices of Narad's throne. Let's see, you leveled up, I'll give you something into spell cooldown. And maybe... Mm -mm -mm, let's give you crystalline control. So what's left? To this favorite and to none. Maybe we should go back to Bastard's Wound to look for more scrolls left by Lexim. Hmm? Does that sound like a good idea? Thank you. 
No, oh, I want to, before we go, I want to say for sure. Um, and the Iron Hearth is the one that's left. Your progress is arrested by the appearance of a gang in crimson and leather who ran the corner ahead of you. Oh shit, verse matters. The ass gang! She shrugs at you, questioning glance. I ran with them for a bit. They note you and approach, weapons at ease. The foremost gang member raises a hand in greeting. You raise your own hand in response, greeting the approaching gang. The leader's head is half shown and a pale sickle uh, of scar curls down her cheek to the corner of her thin lips. Date binder, she says, bowing her head slightly. There's. Her tone is cold, her eyes narrowed at your scarlet fury compatriot. We don't much care about the slipper loyalty of law dogs. Mats can't help but nip at their betters. <laughs> Chuckles from the other members of her gang. But first, she betrayed the chorus and that demands a scalp. Sorry, Vers answers. I'm flout of spare scalps, clever ass. The one you're using will do nicely, another member of the gang says. Vers looks to you. They want to fight and I'm happy to oblige. Your call, Binder. You draw your weapon and nod to verse. She matches your movement and the two of you leap into motion. The Asgang is quick to react, readying weapons and makeshift shields. The leader belts out a piercing war cry that is echoed by her compatriots. Verse leads the dance of blades and you follow in her wake, a bulwark brooking no interruption from behind. Bronze and iron flash in the sun and blood sputters across the dirt. It's all over shockingly quick. And the two of you stand above the dying quarmen, forthcoming in greedy sh sh swallows. She meets your glare for grin and gestures down the road towards your destination. Shall we? Why did I... wait, why? I don't know why we gained fear with her here because i glared at her i don't know maybe i'm trying to save okay oh. <laughs> I didn't let her cast it. This is useless. I should try something else. This isn't Why working. Ha! A little bit slow. The dark fur beast woman snarls and quivers, panting lightly at your approach. She hunches low, long, gangly fingers caressing the ground. Alpha, to kills and shadow smells good. Like mountain dough. Makes beast woman blood stir. Run hot hot. Makes beast woman want to hunt, bite, rot. Beast woman is happy. Likes when fate by no winds. Likes that fate binder slaughtered Alpha of Scarlet Chorus without mercy. <laughs> Was vicious, cunning, archon with many voices. Was Alpha of biggest pack. Means Alpha of Kills and Shadow is bigger, better, strongest. Will always win. Fate binder wants Beast Woman? No, that's all. Thank you. Fatebinder. I never thought that anyone could get the jump on the voices of Narat. He outlasted the most of his enemies and ate the others. He was this great bottomless <laughs> thing. I just assumed that he would be around forever. And now he's dead. It's hard to believe, really. 
and I'm happy. But he also gave me this life, this name. I hated him, but he was incredible, an artist. What I'm trying to say here is that I'm impressed. You've exceeded my low expectations. Do you think the voices is really dead? If we're being honest with each other, I have my doubts. The voices could scheme a thousand steps ahead of anyone. I can only imagine that he had something planned for his death. Some contingency. It could be so complex that we might never recognize if it if we saw it. It might not ever happen in our lifetimes. If we're lucky. Could be. But right now, we must focus on other issues here. Oh. Apparently time is not... Who are you? <laughs> Sorry, I can't. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, apparently time is not flowing when we are king. Heal yourself. Will do. Nobody heard that, right? I should try something else. No, don't fight hey. hey! Don't throw rocks at me. Jeez. If you think it will help. I hope. I hope it will help. If I must. Heads up, we have company. Damn thing good to be a cloth. You're doing great. I got it. This is useless. I should try something else. This isn't working. It is. Something harder. Giant boulder, go! Right. Fall before me! Yeah, I think we should equip those with a different weapon. A5. Yeah. I think she's not really fine do working with the... Um, what's that? <laughs> with spears. Two-handed, no. Let's open up. Um, don't last for you. Yeah, 
Oh, oh no. This is two handed, right? Slash, pierce, two handed, yeah. Um, so yeah. In combat. I'm not in combat. No, there's, uh, there's, 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 here you are, I'll give you this one handed. I just think she does better with that. Annihilation, drag, trap, I don't really want to give her any weapon that belongs to the voices of Nerat. Hmm. Okay, so I'll leave you with this. Don't we have any better equipment for you? Mm. Heavy armor. I think not. Although you are wearing heavy armor. Well, let's give you this one. Okay. Hey, all of you. Come on. The silence in Cacophony tells me that the Voices of Narat is dead, and I have every reason to celebrate. But I don't imagine for a moment that you came seeking my gratitude for a job well done. So, you see fit to grace my halls with your presence. This will be the last time. I have no wish to consort with traitors. You have held back this campaign against the Tears long enough! After I grind your bones into the dry earth, my disfavored will take back this realm for the vaunted north, and you will be forgotten. Beast woman and alpha to kill in shadow have come hunt disfavored extinct. After many more than five seasons of hunting, finally, now, now, last shadow hunter will slice slaughter, will devour alpha to ironclads. Will be Archon to Ironclad's bones that are being ground between Beast Woman's killing teeth. Yeah, what she said. Would that I had killed you back in Vendrian's well. Had I a moment of foresight, I would not have hesitated to twist your head from your neck. Gather, my legion. We will see this pestilence dispatched for the battlement of war. Fatebinder, prepare yourself. Teach this one a lesson. We will not suffer in no, subordination. Don't worry. <laughs> Kill all of you. Apparently, I am real. Ah! <laughs> 
Did not lose any of your blood, apparently. The Archon looks down on his blood-stained hands with disbelief. Beads of sweat roll from his brow and glisten at the corners of his eyes. Raven Ash turns his attention up to you. The last of the fight has left him, and nothing remains but the final vestiges of a defeated man. A word, please. Humor an old man and his regrets. Ash glances about at his favorite corpses littering the courtyard. His shoulders quake as his strength departs him. Say what you would, Arkan. You are on a path to incredible power. A path that I walked long, long ago. There was strength, victory, triumph. Everything an Archon of War should expect from a life so accomplished. He takes deep breaths through his nose as he clings to life. But there was also pain. Had I another century to describe it, I could not explain the punishing agony of my devotion. My soldiers grew to depend on me, and I gifted them my protection. But I also took their harm upon myself. I had the strength to endure, for a time. Every gutting, every crushed bone, every death. I took it all upon myself to spare my troops. You must be prepared to do the same. Go on. Your rise to power is no matter of personal glory. It touches all who trail in your wake. When you... When you ascend, you won't be alone. Far from it. There will be others who look to you. You will be responsible for them in... In more ways than you can know. Take care with those who follow you. 
depend on each other, but harden yourself to accept the burden of their love. Devotion can bite deeper than any spear. He looks to your assembled company with a mixture of sympathy and regret. I hope that you are prepared for what comes next, because... He grits his teeth as a fresh wave of agony threatens to overcome him. Because Kairos will not make it easy. His energy spent, the Archon releases all of his tension, and for an instant his face reflects deepest peace. Graven Ash, the last of the great northern warlords, dies before your eyes. If Ironclad's alpha crawls back to life, Kills and Shell will happily mutilate Elder for vengeance again, and again, and again. For several minutes after the Archon's body hits the ground, Kills in Shadow howls wildly at the sky and claws a fresh, deep scar in her chest. She wears it proudly, her self-inflicted war wound, her mark of victory, her long-awaited revenge. She kicks dirt at remaining chunks of his corpse and grunts, satisfied when they neither wriggle nor make a sound. Seeing that one falls is like watching a spire hit the ground. Somehow I thought I would enjoy it more. Purse frowns to herself and shrugs. Incredible. I assume he was invulnerable. I guess even I can be wrong on the occasion. And all those he kept alive, also, on death. It's poetic, really. And with that, we will end this part here. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive, and see you soon. Bye.